I'm Alexis Temkin, toxicologist at EWG, and I'm here to answer a few questions about short-chain PFAS. Forever chemicals called PFAS are a class of thousands of synthetic, toxic, and persistent chemicals used in consumer and industrial products and applications. This chemical class is often grouped into long-chain PFAS, compounds like PFOA and PFOS used to make Teflon and Scotchgard that are now phased out due to their health hazards, and short-chain PFAS, which are replacement chemicals for the long chains, but which function very similarly in products. Industry and PFAS manufacturers have claimed that short-chain PFAS are safer than the long chains. But the more we learn about these replacements, the more the evidence mounts of their similarity to the phased-out long-chain compounds. Short-chain PFAS may cause similar health harms, and they also contaminate our bodies and the environment. Some of these health concerns include harm to the immune system, harm to development and the reproductive system, and they may increase the risk of cancer. Short-chain PFAS often have shorter half-lives than long chains, which means they are removed from the body more quickly and not often detected in blood samples. However, recent studies have found short-chain PFAS in breast milk, and studies have also shown that they can easily cross the placental barrier, both of which indicate they could be causing harm to children in ways that haven't been adequately studied. Since short-chain PFAS have been used to replace long-chain PFAS in several industries, they can be found in similar places, like clothing, nonstick cookware, food packaging, stain-resistant carpet treatments, firefighting foam, and drinking water. We recommend following EWG's tips to reduce PFAS exposure, such as skipping takeout containers and fast food as much as possible, opting for cast iron or stainless steel cookware, for going additional stain-resistant treatments for carpets and furniture, and using a carbon or reverse osmosis filter for your tap water, if your drinking water is contaminated. It's important to note that the best way to reduce PFAS exposure is to regulate them as a class at the state and federal level. Thanks for listening, and make sure to visit ewg.org for more information on PFAS.